Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. If you've been watching previously, welcome back. If this is your first time with me, welcome. Please go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below to support the channel and get notifications for any future videos. I'm trying to put one out per week, so be on the lookout for those. And in today's video, I want to discuss my personal experience sort of reaching an inflection point in my life from where I was previously not sleeping very well to learning more about sleep and then subsequently improving the quality of my life through a higher quality and greater quantity of sleep. This journey starts back in 2007 when I was a freshman in high school, and I don't think it's necessarily a unique experience for a high schooler to have poor sleep quality and quantity, and I am certainly no exception to that rule. I think I was averaging probably six hours a night for all four years in high school. And then after graduation, I left for the Marine Corps where I was in the infantry for four years, and as we all can probably guess, there wasn't a lot of sleep happening during that time. I think I probably averaged five or six hours a night, you know, with some nights being more, especially on weekends if we had weekends off, and other nights being substantially less, maybe even a couple hours or no sleep at all. So the time definitely varied there, but overall during those four years, very little sleep. And after leaving the Marine Corps, I spent three years completing a business degree at Indiana University. And during that time, I was still sleeping probably only six hours a night just wasn't very good. So in 2019, this is sort of where the inflection point hit, where I started to learn more about sleep. That's where I was first exposed to sleep science, and I began learning more such that I could then apply it to my life to sort of make improvements in these areas. So to put this in perspective, this started in 2007 and went all the way through 2018 in December when I finished my business degree. So that's 12 years with very poor sleep probably not very good for your health. And thankfully in 2019, I was exposed to my first sort of dose of sleep science and learned so many things that I then started to apply to my life to basically improve my overall health and happiness. Prior to making some changes in my life in regard to sleep, I was chronically underslept and as a result, chronically tired throughout the day. I'd also get sick multiple times per year, but after I slowly started implementing some of these lessons learned, I've been much better off, I've had much more energy throughout the day, and I rarely get sick anymore. Going back to my first exposure with sleep science, it was actually on the Joe Rogan podcast, and he had a guest on the show that you'll be familiar with if you've watched my previous videos and heard me mention sleep. It is Matt Walker, and he's a PhD, a professor of neuroscience and psychology out at UC Berkeley in California, and also the founder of the Center for Human Sleep Science. He did also just start a podcast if you are interested in that. And he is the author of a book you probably also heard me mention, which is one of my favorite books now, Why We Sleep. It's fantastic, 10 out of 10, would recommend checking that out. Um, I will go ahead and link that in the description below if you're interested in reading it. I will go ahead and also link that podcast with him and Joe Rogan as well. But I can't understate the impact that this podcast had on my life because it basically opened the floodgates to me learning more about sleep science. So from here, because I was so fascinated with what Matt Walker had to say on Joe Rogan's podcast, I began delving into sleep science from this point on. So I've listened to numerous podcasts, lectures, read multiple scientific papers and books as well. As an incoming medical student and future physician, a lot of the books that I read are related to medicine, health and wellness, and one topic that pervades a lot of these books is sleep because it's just so important and the authors give it its due credit. I have three examples off the top of my head on books that I've read where the authors specifically bring up sleep to discuss the importance of its role in health and longevity. The first example that I have is Why Zebras Don't Get Ulcers by Robert Sapolsky, and this is a tremendous book on chronic stress and stress-related disease and he actually dedicates an entire chapter to sleep and how it helps to mitigate chronic stress and helps to prevent some of these stress-related diseases. The second example is a book called The Aging Brain written by Timothy Jennings. He's a medical doctor and in this book basically details things that you can do to help keep your brain sharp and prevent things like dementia later in life and he does dedicate quite a bit of time discussing the importance of sleep as well. The third example is a book called Back in Control by David Hanscom. He's also a medical doctor, he's a neurosurgeon, and in meeting with patients, he stresses the importance of sleep to such a high degree that if it's an elective surgery, this is different if it's an emergent thing, I'm sure, but in an elective surgery situation, he won't even consider operating on them unless they're getting adequate sleep for 30 days straight. And when I say adequate, he, I believe he said seven or eight hours a day for 30 days before he'll even consider operating on them. And this is because your pain experience is so heavily tied into your sleep such that if you're getting a low quantity and quality of sleep, 
you're likely to perceive greater levels of pain compared to if you were getting adequate sleep. So he won't even have the discussion of operating on these patients until he knows that they are getting adequate sleep to account for this. I'll go ahead and link those books in the description below as well in the event that you're interested in reading them. So that actually brings us to the end of this video. I have two requests for you as the listener. Thing number one, please comment below. And what I want you to do is on a scale of one to 10, one being the lowest, 10 being the highest, please go ahead and rate how happy you are with your sleep at this point in time. And if it's anything lower than a 10, please just elaborate a little bit if you're comfortable and talk about why that number isn't higher. So I think through recognition of these things, we can then begin to work on them. So that's the point here. Thing number two, if you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel, turn on the notifications so you will go ahead and get notified when I drop more videos in the future. The next video is going to be on five tips that you can use to improve your sleep. So if you don't have necessarily the buy-in to go ahead and read this book or listen to a two-hour podcast, this next video is probably going to be pretty short, but it should include some useful information that you can start implementing in your life to vastly improve your sleep and quality of life. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for tuning into this one, and I'll see you in the next one.